the rookie MP Jamel Giovanni goes into the Heritage Committee and sits across from the DEI MP from the Liberal Party, and it got pretty spicy. Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. So as I was saying, the committee meeting was having a, the, excuse me, the Committee on Canadian Heritage was having the Minister for Diversity and Inclusion, and they were talking about the um, inclusion part of her portfolio, which I have issues with separately, but we won't discuss that in this. What we will talk about is how MB, MP Giovanni, who's new, and you think, might think to yourself would be uh, still trying to find his footing, completely took control of the room and put every put this entire minister in her place. I'm not going to um, mince much words. I'm just going to let you hear the entire thing because there's a lot of back and forth. And if you don't see it right, it, you might take it out of context. So uh, the minister's colleague, uh, MP Anthony Housefather, is actually on Twitter right now agreeing with the conservative position that Sammy Dune should be listed as a terrorist entity. I wonder if the minister responsible for anti-racism would agree with her colleague, uh, Mr. Housefather, and the conservative party on that position. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm not sure if my colleague was in the House during question period, and this was a question that was posed to the Minister of Public Safety, and I think he was very clear in his answer. Um, any um, indication or... Good enough for Mr. Housefather, so I thought maybe the party's position had changed since then. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mad Madam, Madam Chair, through you, I think we can all agree um, any listing of a terrorist organization is not done by politicians, is done by the advice of our national and security intelligence. Uh, we take public safety extremely seriously. Uh, this is a work that our intelligence does on a daily basis, uh, you know, with our five eye partners and the minister, as he mentioned in the House of Commons today. Ma I think the Madam minister may want to meet with Mr. Housefather to discuss this, but... Okay, Madam, answer received. No, you, you know, Madam Chair, I think it's important to get the answer on the record. I think it's important to get my answer on the record. Thank you. And as the Minister of Public Safety indicated that he has urgently asked for an expedited um, uh, advice from the National Security, um, uh, from the National Security Intelligence, he'll, and he'll have an answer in the next coming days. I, th I don't think that's fast enough for Mr. Housefather. I hope uh, you guys can have a conversation. Father is not a member. It's, it's on Twitter. You can look at it. Okay. Let's uh, let's, we'll keep moving. Uh, uh, does the minister support the government's uh, black justice strategy as part of the anti racism strategy? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, are you familiar with some of the radical criminal justice policies that your government's black justice strategy is considering at the moment? Uh, Madam Speaker, I think it's important to recognize that uh, the work that we're leading, uh, working alongside black communities right across this country, is fundamentally something that we have heard from communities members on the ground of addressing systemic racism within our criminal justice system, which is important that we address. This is the work that my colleague, Minister Virani, is leading. Um, there's nothing that has been, uh, we have, there's no decisions have been made yet around the strategy, but I know we're going to be working alongside community members to make sure that communities... Um, is, the, is the minister familiar with a document called the Roadmap for Transformative Change that was released this summer? Uh, Madam Speaker, this is a work that my colleague, Minister Rani, is leading. We have very meaningful conversations on how, how to address uh, systemic racism within our no, you're not criminal familiar. justice system, uh, which your we know... Colleague, your colleague, Minister Varani, described this document as, quote, history-making for the black community and, quote, important milestone for the black community. It seems like something the anti-racism strategy leader may be familiar with, but I, it sounds like you're not. So just to recap Point of a couple order, of the... Madam Chair? <laughs> it's, it's not appropriate for a committee member. They may ask their questions, but suggesting things that have not been said into the record is inappropriate. And I would ask that Mr. Giovanni just stick to his thoughts and not try Whoa. to speak on behalf of the minister. She's more than capable of doing that on her own. Unless he would like to just continue with his questions, then committee can That's get back to it. That's not a point of order, it. Madam Chair. You know, as a black Canadian, I've been assured, assured 
heard that the anti-racism strategy is a whole of government approach. And if my community is told by the Minister of Justice that something is, and I quote, history making an important milestone for black people, that the leader of the anti-racism strategy would be familiar with it. I think that's a fair question. Nonetheless, some of the policies that are included in this include mass decarceration, reducing the number of incarcerated people by 30% over the next 10 years, uh, decriminalizing a supply of 30 days worth of hard drugs, including cocaine, heroin, and meth, uh, and also defunding police departments by removing 25% of federal grants from eligibility to police organizations. Seconds. So the question I have is, do you support these radical criminal justice policies that your government has published as part of the Black Justice Strategy? Madam Speaker, I think... Um, it would only be a conservative uh, making a joke out of, you know, in joking a joke, making a joke out of systemic racism that this we is not have a joke. seen in over you incarceration of uh, black I have a and right indigenous to ask people in our criminal justice system. Order. To be making a joke order, about please. that is, is it is disgraceful. Order. But I expect better. I would think Mr. I would Giovanni, expect better allow the from people. To answer the question, please. Nobody's laughing, Madam Chair. They're flooding our communities with drugs. Is a problem. That's not true. Go to the. Well, let's for, let's start by saying that MP Giovanni was excellent in his ability to handle those three women screaming at him. Sometimes at the same time, two at the same time for sure. From across the room, from three different sides of the room, they were all just yelling at him and rolling their eyes at him and demanding that he act in a way that they deem to be acceptable, acting in a way that they deem to be okay. If you were to reverse that situation and try and convince MP O'Connell that she shouldn't interfere in another member of parliament's approach and shouldn't, on the one hand, say that she's not allowed to, he's not allowed to put words in somebody's mouth while she's putting words in somebody's mouth. She would start screaming about how you're mad at her because she's a girl. I believe that the one-sidedness of their approach reflects poorly on anybody who voted for them. Imagine that you were not an MP. Imagine that you were simply trying to understand this policy that has flooded this your neighborhood with you know guys that just got released early because of some policy from this tough on crime. Um, uh, liberal party who is so tough on crime they want to defund the police I, I can't believe we're still doing that and they want to reduce the amount of people in prison by 30 percent for no reason other than the fact that they're in prison imagine that you were just a constituent in that neighborhood and you would try to approach her and said and you didn't agree with her how dismissive would she be of you how how completely and utterly would she tell you that you don't have the right to talk to her like that and she would just leave you standing there with your questions how do you vote for people like that who don't care what you have to say, who think that because they got the job that you have to all of a sudden bow and scrape? I mean, she rolled her eyes, what, three times? Is this the appropriate behavior of a woman who wants to be called the minister of something? This is a cabinet person. This is a person with, who's close to the prime minister, like in, in, the, in this inner circle. And they act like, I mean, the word, the only word that, that is appropriate for both YouTube and this situation is immature. Though I, I can assure you that I have a couple of others. And I just think on the one hand that uh, MP Giovanni handled that expertly. That I think that he didn't back down from any of these women screaming at him and banging gavels at him and telling him that he has to behave himself. All the while behaving like they don't have any restrictions whatsoever. I, I don't believe that MP Fry should be uh, the chair because she's clearly not capable of, of being impartial. And I still, I just would like to point out that I, uh, I don't agree with MP Virani's assessment that we should be letting people out of prison just for the sake of letting them out of prison. But that, I suppose, is a different video. I want to thank you for listening. I will talk to you next time.